him. Hey guys, I'm TT. And I'm Beck. And we're with the kids call. We'll go whatever. Oh damn. <laughs> okay, <laughs> c'est moi. Okay, non, c'est pas exposé. So, on est dans un nouveau studio. <laughs> the Archetype Studio. <laughs> Shout out to Steve. Yeah. Shout out to Steve. Et Pavel, pour le voir, parce qu'on était homeless for um, months. It's hard quand t'es homeless. Um, <laughs> you don't have a studio, puis on a vraiment, we miss recording. I feel like it was froid la dernière fois qu'on a record. Yeah. La neige. Yeah, February. Yeah. February. Oui? Yeah. Ouais. Non, yeah. c'est ça. So, on est vraiment content d'être ici. Le, the lighting is nice. We feel good. Do you feel good? I feel amazing. Do ça. you feel good? I feel good. Okay. Je vais pas vous parler. Pour de vrai, guys, I'm not, I don't feel good, but... <laughs> <laughs> Beck, are you come 17 different panic attacks today? But it's okay. It's not my journey. It's okay. But it's okay. C'est chill. It's gonna be. Yeah. OK. So, je vais vous introduire sans plus tarder le sujet d'aujourd'hui. Le titre est Black Women Sexual Agency, The Fight Against the Whore Allegation. Mm. So, je pense que durant les épisodes, les previous épisodes de Woke Whatever, on est passé sur le fait que les femmes noires sont over-sexualized. People dehumanize black women all the time. Um, Puis, Là, le focus de cet épisode, justement, c'est « What black women are doing to clap back? » Un peu, genre, comment ils font pour reclaim or just pursue this um, idea of womanhood? Parce que, justement, we are deprived of it. So, um, ça va être vraiment un deep dive of, like, how black women are trying to pursue it, but, by, comme, en le, en le, comme, essayant d'atteindre ce genre, ce, womanhood status, how we harm each other mm -hmm. in the process. Um, and these are the horror allegations. This is actually the allegations dans le sens que comme um, people are trying justement à de, comme, bring us down puis play on the over six shots of black women, black women are not worthy of this, that, 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 and how are we fighting this but like harming each other as we're doing it. I don't know how clear that is but it's gonna be Um, and we're sharing, pour de vrai, on, on partage nos pensées, so please um, get in the discussion, le, laissez des commentaires on IG, here, share, whatever. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one for sure. So, um, like Beck said, um, throughout history, black women, we have seeked this idea of womanhood, and um, we have been depicted different ways and um, the visual depiction of black women is what I'm going to start talking about um, and one of the ways that one of the most common ways that black women have uh, one of the common visual depictions of black women that we know is the 2000s Video, video vixen. vixen. So we're going to start with that before we get into anything else. So we're going to deep dive into the video vixen. I think when we're talking about black women sexuality, when we're talking about black womanhood, black women in the media, it's impossible to talk about that without talking about the... Impressive. Impressive. <laughs> it's, it, without talking about the OGs. The OGs, the 2000s video vixens. So... For those that don't know what a video vixen is, for those that were not on BET, that were not seeing what was going on, I'm going to define, I have the definition right here. And by the way, if y'all are watching and you're judging this big ass dinosaur ass <laughs> computer that I have right now, y'all are so anti-black and you can buy me a MacBook. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the Wikipedia a definition of a video vixen um, is a video vixen, also referred to as a hip hop honey or a video girl, is a female model who appears in hip hop oriented music videos. The, vid the video vixen image has become a staple in popular music, especially within the genre of hip hop. Many video vixens are aspiring actors, singers, dancers, or professional models, women from various cultures who have been portrayed either as fragile, manipulative, fetishistic, or submissive within contemporary music lyrics videos, concerts, and movie soundtracks. So um, let's break that down. So before I decipher everything on the music video industry, let's break down the history of video vixens because it's an interesting history timeline. And guys, I'm just letting you guys know this is going to be a long one, maybe a two-parter. We shall see. We shall see. Pour we shall see. We shall see. Um, first of all, were you into video vixens like that? No, G. Um, moi, pour vrai... No. For the c'est BET qui m'a vraiment comme mm. introduced to video vixens, puis genre c'était quoi et tout. But I don't feel like I was like that. C'est comme j'étais pas dans les magazines, okay. puis de comme oh c'est qui. I mean, 
y en a que je me souviens, to be honest, but they're from like R&B music videos, not ouais. like hip hop, des genres, les militaires font des tours. So I was not as to an end. Into it like that. No. I can't. No, 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 no. Okay, so. I know that you were. I was though. obsessed. <laughs> so let's get into the history first. So um, music videos first became really, really popular in the mainstream in the early 80s when MTV um, was created in 1981. So before that, music videos weren't like that popping, but now we had a whole channel that was dedicated to music videos. But at first, you know, it was white, very mm. white. So it was only white artists playing rock and country music, which is really interesting because black people invented all that shit. Yeah. And a lot of the things that I'm going to be referring to in terms of the timeline of Video Vixens is um, from uh, Khadija's, I don't, I cannot say her last name so I won't but butcher it but all of the resources that we use no. for this episode yo but for a bon shout out to Khadija, Khadija um Josie Kimberly Foster uh, and sexual media we put a vrai a lot of research that was put into this so ouais. we're gonna shout out shout out to them we're gonna put all of the the links in the description so um so music videos were popularized in the early 80s due to mtv but we were not really seeing black people like that um until the late 80s when mtv added this uh, co- uh this concept of mtv yo raps so now we had you know hip-hop videos and in the late 80s early 90s when we look when we talked about hip-hop videos and when we saw the women that were depicted in these videos they were not necessarily like a sex symbol and they did not play such a necessary Um, role in the plot like the like in a lot of these music videos the you the the video would still make sense if there were no women like they they didn't play that big of a role they were more like okay if you're at a party there would be girls dancing you know part of the background uh, yeah or like if there's like one love interest but it was not it was not more of a sexual angle it was really just beautiful women and and women that you would see walking down the street so that is that's how it first started off when we're looking at like rap hip-hop music videos and also mind you the Rap videos that were shown on MTV for a lot of white people, that was their first exposure to black hip hop culture. Um, How do I, yeah. So that was that was kind of their first um, their, their first connection to that. Now, um, when did the image of the black woman in hip hop videos start to become more sexual? A lot of people will give credit to Sir Mix a lot when he made that song uh, "Baby Got Back." I love like it. Like, yeah. yeah. So that video. <laughs> was definitely not uh, a video where <laughs> black women were shown as, you know, the love interest and all of that. And that was, a lot of people credit that video for changing the lane of hip hop videos and the way that women were depicted. Because that video, we saw a lot of close-ups of women shaking their booties and not really their face. When before in music videos, the emphasis was, if we were going to have a female a lead or whatever, the emphasis was on her beauty, on, you know, her softness and all of that. But now it was... She's raunchy, she's sexy, she has booty. And that uh, kind of paved the way for other videos. And to, and then we got to the late 90s, early 2000s. And that's where everything shit popped off. Shit off. Um, basically, because music videos were more popular at that point, um, budget has, had increased and, um, you know, more attention was being put on music videos. And Vixens had now become a staple of black hip hop video culture, along with... Yachts, cars, uh, money, alcohol, and bitches. <laughs> and um, notice how I named bitches as the the pro- as an object. Like I was naming the yachts and the pools and all of that. And that's for a reason. Um, women in uh, video vixens in the late nineties, early two thousands. A lot of their their role was to sell the story along with the other things that were part of the music videos, the flashiness, the cars and all of that. Their role was to sell this story of I'm a rapper and you wish you was like me. You wish you got it like me. You wish you had the cars like me. You wish you had the planes like me and you wish you had the bitches like me. And it's to sell the story. And black women were used as a way to sell that story. So it was less black women in the background and it was more, if there was a rapper, it was very rare that they would just be rapping alongside other men. There had to be women of some sort, either just dancing on them or somewhere. Um, 
And that was the overall image. And I think the best depiction of it, by the way, in this episode, in this episode, we're going to be referencing some videos, some people and all of that. So feel free to like Google while you're listening or like pause, like check out the videos we'll be mentioning. If you all, if you guys really don't Excellent. know what we're talking about and you're trying to be tapped in, go, feel free. So uh, one of the best examples of early 2000s video vixen, hip hop video, flashy culture is definitely Big Pimpin', Jay-Z. That is like a staple, it, pour vrai. staple. If you want to know, like go watch that video watch, and then yeah. you see what that was the vibe. That was the aesthetic. That is what it was. And these videos, they had budgets. I think that yacht that they were on, I, I read somewhere that it was $10 million. dollars. I don't know. Mais c'est ça, c'est, c'est ça qu'ils disent, pour vrai. C'est ça qu'ils disent. And they flew the girls. They flew the girls to freaking Comme Trinidad. Si, je sais pas, là. Yo, <laughs> the girls are getting flew out. Oh, back vacation, pour vrai. We, yeah. like, it was big. It was big. It was really, really big. Um, and they were they were really necessary for the plot. They were necessary to sell the story, to sell this plot of being the object that the viewer would desire and want to be like. We aspire to be like the rappers and get the girls like the rappers. So that's what we were seeing. And then at some point, um, the video vixen culture did die out. I would say around like the late 2000s, early 2010s, it was less prevalent um, because for different reasons. First, um, it was such a big market at that point that they did not have to, like there were so many girls that were applying that you could just... Yeah, dans le fond, genre, um, the, excuse, what was fun with the video vixen, it was the, the exclusivity c'était le comme who's that girl genre. yes c'était le comme oh les like, who's that girl she's like je veux savoir c'est qui puis dans le temps il y avait pas comme Instagram puis tu Google puis tu comme oh, c'est qui c'est they have to send letters comme si <laughs> au, au producer genre who's na 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 and then okay she's da la 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 puis après tu la mets dans une autre vidéo puis là c'est vraiment le exclusive mais il y a tellement de filles qui voulaient juste être part of the you know part, part of the train like comme moi si je vais te flou tu me dis what the fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so elles étaient plus jeunes puis elles, elles étaient prêtes à faire à show more mm-hmm. and do it for less so comme like do it for exposure or just like vraiment des prix bas fait when you can have like young girls and like 19s 20 qui sont prêts à faire like the most for nothing tu vas pas nécessairement aller like, chercher Melissa who's like 4,000 like one Ten, shoot. 10K minimum. <laughs> 10K minimum. Comme ça, ça a un peu... Ben ouais, baisser la valeur de yeah. Video Vixen. Yeah. 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 And also, um, a lot of the... A lot of uh, rappers would start hiring strippers instead of actual yeah, video sure. models because the strippers... A lot of strippers were more, more comfortable with like the nudity and everything. So then it's just... It kind of just died down. Yeah. And also, c'est le temps où il y a commencé à avoir des... Um, um, des sites pour download la musique illegally. Oh, uh, yeah. Fait que c'est genre... Les CD vendaient plus. So you had to cut budget somewhere pour comme essayer de fight back. Yeah. Fait que, again, no more money. <laughs> Yeah. Non, puis, oh, c'est fou parce qu'on le remarque, je dis toujours genre, yo, c'est pas comme avant, non, 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 but they have, they... mais là, c'est, I guess it's better, mais il y a eu un moment où je suis juste comme, bro, les, like, les vidéos don't hit, comme si tu yeah. qu'il y avait comme part two, oh, <laughs> oui, <laughs> un vidéo était sept minutes, and then, to oui. be continued, like, comme, yes, yo, oui, so. or like the remixes, <laughs> where it was like a whole other freaking ouais. song, genre, avec sept personnes, ouais, uh, non, it's not, no, it's, yeah, not, it's, not it's not like, it's not like ça. it used to be, <laughs> So, to be a video vixen, you had to have a certain, you had to fit a certain standard. You had to have a certain look. Now, what was that look? It was slim, thick, and or just thick. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, mainly light skin. And before y'all come for me and say, oh, no, to see, I have any dark skin. There were brown skin girls. Yes, there were. However, you did have to benefit from certain systems of oppression. They would not put a dark skinned girl with 4C hair or a dark skinned girl with more so Afrocentric features. If you were a dark skinned girl, trust me, you had that long wavy wig. So, and, that, and that's really what it was. But to be honest, dans ma tête, c'était vraiment plus diverse. And then when I went back, she comes It's <laughs> not. And <laughs> I actually, <laughs> yo, I was <laughs> watching, I did my <laughs> research. I did my research. I was watching videos after really? videos after videos. And I was Check like, out. Yeah, yeah you know. like it's it's giving the same look. Yeah, they have extensions and stuff. Yeah, it's, like, it's the gosh. same look. Like no. I think it, and it, it is, feels more natural. It like, does. A little bit. It does. Well, a it little does. bit messy. No, but for the vrai, in terms of diversity, it was, I trouve que we did see more black, like dark ouais. skinned women for sure compared to now. It's like a different level. I think it was more. More, yeah, yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah. Six yeah. You're borderline, bro. Yeah. <laughs> borderline. And what was the common theme that was seen in these music videos? Well, we would see um, video vixens and hip hop videos, black women dancing sexually, and also Latina women. I'm, uh, Latina women as well. I'm not going to say just black women. Latina women as well. Shout out to Gloria Velez, OG. Um, black women dancing sexually or just shaking their ass either by themselves or on men, um, being in bikinis or thongs, getting out of the pool, like the slow mos. Um, camera angles were like very strategic, strategic, strategically the low. The see the boobies, <laughs> see the ass, all of that shit. Um, yeah, the close-up scenes in bathtubs, hot tubs, sex spaces, um, scenes that promote women on women, although it wasn't on some LGBTQ shit, it was on some male gay shit, all of that. So um, this is what we would see. Now, the way that video, video vixens, video vixens in the black community were household names. It was, they were very much known mm -hmm. by names. Um, many had very successful careers, um, charging up to $10,000 per shoot uh, for an appearance. And there were the main girls, the elite girls. The, that's Melissa Ford, Gloria Velez, Buffy the Body, had Buffy the Body. Corinne Stephens. And we're going to get into, we're going to get into Corinne Stephens in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> It's not even like that. No, no, no. It's no, not no, even. No, 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 shit, no, 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 it's no not shit. even like that. <laughs> yeah. So video vixens were major celebrities in the black community. And why is that? Well, I believe that they were major they were looked at as celebrities in the black community, especially by black women, because for the first time, a lot of black women were able to see themselves and not just see themselves, but see themselves as like eye candy like being desired as much as we knew that it was yeah you're desired in this way you are still seen you could still open your tv and see black women and black women being like she is the bad bitch like mm -hmm. she is that girl and i think that gave a lot of black women some people to look up to people to want to aspire to be also when we're looking at the the the, the body standard um early 2000s curves ass titties was popping in the black community but not outside of it not outside of it anybody that consumed any type of pop culture knows that in the early 2000s it was all about being as skinny as possible yeah. who was thinner than who like that was a thing like that was like ma magazine articles on who, how many celeries Lindsay lohan is eating per day like it was a thing and um the black community is really where we were able to um appreciate and love on curves and all of that and it allowed black women to have that standard and to feel comfortable with that so and it's it's really crazy how now that is the beauty standard like 50, 20 years later video vixens really started that shit so and they were really seen as black celebrities on magazine covers they were doing bt award red carpets they were driving the nice cars all of that so although we knew well, I was too young to really understand that it was misogyny, but a lot of women did understand that, you know what, they're, they look like they're yeah. kind of being ex exploited, but it's almost as if it's worth it. Yeah, but it's really because what you said, like, um, being feminine mm -hmm. is to display your femininity and be desired yeah. by male. Fake white women had that, like they had that. Yeah. They've been having that, genre. they were in, painting, in paintings, in paintings, and oh, it's art, it's not, but... Black women didn't. Yeah. Be, come on, Adzi, because we're always like pursuing this, I like this idea of femininity or womanhood. Genre, like we want to be part of it. Like video vixen were just that. Like they were just like you must to live one. Well you want to be them. Much yeah. as I don't care. I think she's not about the critical thinking. Well, they didn't, no, no. Like, you're like wow, she's fire. Yo, she's she's, she's fucking fire. fire. And, yo, put up till this day. Genre, I guess I'm just gonna, ugh, no, she's fuck. fucking fire. Genre, yeah. Me, I used to be obsessed with Melissa Ford because she's also from Canada. So I was like, oh my god, like that could be me type shit. Mm. I was obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> no, my dad ass. Yeah, bitch, what ass? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, so that so that's basically a, a, a bit of a rundown of video vixens. Now, is okay. So we understand that the story that is being sold by these rappers that have video vixens on their on their uh, mu music video shoots is to display this narrative of I'm that nigga and I got the bitches. Now we know that that is the story, and we know that the lyrics are often very degrading. We know, like we hear it, we see it. Um, Black women are being told all of these crazy things about, yeah, and then I spray in her face, all that shit. And then they're, like, posing and shit. Like, we hear those lyrics. We see what the content is. We okay. know that women are being object objectified in these music videos. We see their ass getting slapped and all of that. Now, 
is it just a performance? Do the women that choose to partake in this have full control? Do they have full agency? Is it is it there? Did they reclaim that? Did they did, do, are they owning that? That's where we kind of get into sexual desire versus access. Did you, did you want to say something? No. Okay. Je répondais dans ma tête. Okay. So. It's one thing to be desired and to sell a fantasy. And it would be great if, you know, video vixens were just part of this fantasy that was being sold, same as the way that we're selling these chains and these bottles and all of that by these rappers. It would be, an, it would be nice if it was solely an artistic thing and then the video cuts and then it's done. But when we are getting overwhelming amounts of images that are just that, depicting black women as being overly sexual when we don't really have an opposite portrayal of black women unless it's the mammy <laughs> um that then you start to ask yourself is the media just depicting the reality like is is the media just depicting what is being implied and what is being implied is that these rappers are saying women with these types of bodies are sexy and are ours so how much of that and it's important to understand that and we're going to get into whoreness and all of that so we have to understand that the idea of being a whore is immediately associated with blackness so we have to keep in mind that you know in slavery days black women were labeled as whores um specifically like the jezebel stereotype for different reasons the main reason is uh slavery was abolished in 1808 so slave we, we couldn't import slaves anymore so uh, the only way black women were basically an economic force for plant for plantation owners. So, you know, they were getting trigger warning, they were getting raped. And in order for the slave owners to sleep peacefully at night, they had to create this idea that the black woman was sexually promiscuous and, and cannot be raped, cannot basically. be raped, cannot. Yeah. Be, and, and if, and if anything, she's asking for it. And also a lot of these people, a lot of these slave owners and in, in order to mask their des desire for black women or their attraction to black women, they would tell themselves that, no, that's, that's what they deserve. That's what they wanted in order for them to feel comfortable with the fact that, you know, I, I, I was attracted to a black woman, but I'm not because it's actually, this is actually the narrative. Where she trapped me. Blah, blah, she blah, trapped me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, this is, this is in the making for centuries, the stereotype. And, Post slavery as well, it, it remains. And in order for this Jezebel stereotype to be completely vanish, to, to completely vanish, then white supremacy needs to vanish. What? And as long as we live in a white supremacy, and we will nowhere. constantly be sexualized and we will constantly be whores. And understanding that, how easy is it to say to put a pause to it and say it's just a performance when that is essentially the identity that we've been given. But it's the identity we've been given and we know it. So it's the it's also the identity that we're trying to get away from. Like like that's the I think the tension in like of it all. Yeah. And we have to ask yourself how much power do we truly have over our sexuality when being video vixens because the thing with men is that they can leave the sets after flashing their money and all of that and that is a character like you can leave and le and leave that on set like you could have rappers that have been married for 25 years be on set talking about fucking all these bitches and they get no hoes they have one wife and we know that but and and, and it's fine like once you leave that is you're a married man we know that like it's it's no la performance. that was your performance yeah. you're good like you have niggas that signed 360 deals and are broke as fuck got nothing but a chain and a dream but selling us <laughs> selling us selling us this narrative that they're rich and we know they don't got it but it's fine it's the performance it's and then they can leave and then go back to being regular these rappers that are living so in the fucking valleys talking about shooting niggas when it's like you're not built like that but we will we'll eat it up and you can leave and you can go get invited to the fucking white house after really? talking about blowing niggas brains out but the thing with women is that you cannot leave the that character. i that identity it follows you it it follows you it does yeah so, so that's how you're treated like that on and off the set and um we've uh so i'm gonna quote 
something from an essay that I read called Drop It Like It's Hot, Culture, Industry, Laborers, and Their Perspective on Rap Music Video Production by Mako Fitz. This is actually a really good article, and it was written in 2009, so it was, it was still around that era, so it's still very, like, C'est fresh. Dans le era. Fresh. Yeah. yeah. So she talks about how the line between desire and access is so blurred that it's sometimes hard to profit as a black woman participating in that, as much as we believe that it's our own agency. So she quotes... Rap music videos moved from depicting the artist in realistic scenarios to a KZ cinematic, sensationalized illustration of the persona of the artist. Yet for the video girls, their roles as seductresses, which are simultaneously real and imagined, transfers to their personal lives in terms of how they develop relationships with men and how men interact with them on and off the set. Now, in this essay, she actually interviewed many different people that are part of rap music, music video productions. So models, directors, cast directors extras all of that and the main thing that we heard a lot of the times is that black that they were not black women on set were not respected they were not respected whether it was um by the rappers whether it was by the casting directors they were not respected there was a lot of sexual harassment that happened on set crew members like female crew members would get harassed by by the rappers like makeup artists and shit like stylists would get harassed by these rappers and mind you a lot of these uh videos were like 12 hour shoots niggas drinking smoking playing whatever and there's women around and that story that is being told in the music video literally continues on on set like on set women getting their ass grabbed by these men um women you know women uh performing sexual acts in order to have like the better uh, a better role all of that is seen on set as well so you you have to ask yourself how much of it is a performance when that follows you in life and not and not even just on set outside of it as well we know what it's like to be over sexualized as black women you don't really need to do much you don't need to wear a bikini in order to be in order to be sexualized and that's the thing. The story that is being sold, it never ends. Black women are to be sexualized as much as... And black women are to be sexualized and there's no really way to control it, control the narrative. And we, as much as we want to, we don't really have all that control under patriarchy, under misogynoir. Um, did you want to add something? I think, I think the idea is that because you get money, you have a certain agency... But guys, we work and I feel fucked over. <laughs> so think of you being like a video vixen, puis genre, yes, like feeling in control of like the narrative parce que you get money. It's, it's genre, le gain capital doesn't mean that you're not being exploited in some way, you're not being um, genre taking advantage of in some way. And I think that's just the industry of like music and like video vixen and stuff so to be fair like there's no ex like there will always be exploitation under capitalism well, like in any field of work and i just want to specify that like this is not like video girl shaming like it, i think it's the because i like that was like my dream career as a kid and i think and we're gonna get into we're gonna get into um our 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 points near, don't worry we're getting there but i just really want to preface that this is like i love the video yeah. vixen industry like i love it i just want to preface certain narratives that we see so um music video examples let me let's get into certain examples and the way that um we see that agency being taken away from women so um AO Technology, 50 Cent and Justin Timberlake, that uh, came out in 2007. Feel free to go watch it. It's um, a music video. It's a story about a female stripper. And um, the first verse is, she a working girl. She worked the pole. She break it down. She take it low. Now, the vibe is like, it's like an international spy vibe. And in the music video, the spy flips uh, the character, the, the stripper from her, he, he takes her from the strip club to a high-end stripper, like, high-class, like, stripper room available only to men of, like, a certain status. And it was, like, very exclusive type shit. So he removed her from, like, the regular strip club and put her in a room with, like, his niggas, like, the rich, 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 like, the elites. And um, in the article, um, the author says, the song involves the fantasy world created in the mind of a male viewing a strip show, yet the video portrays the women as sexually available, which 
crosses the boundaries of sexual desires and sexual acts. The intersection of desire and access is the problematic of the booty video. And when women attempt to speak out on how these lines are blurred, they are kicked to the curb. And another example that I would give, which you can talk about music videos and exploitation and all of that without talking about this video, Nelly, Tip Drill, <laughs> Yo, is, I think that video is not even fucking available on the internet. Like, it's it's not on YouTube anymore. Like, they re, they removed that shit. I don't it know. If I don't know if y'all can find it somewhere. If you guys want to go check, um, came out in two thousand four. That video is graphic. You've seen it, huh? We 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 yo. We. That video is crazy. Um, and the main like lyric and the song is, uh, "Must be that ass, cause it ain't your face. I need a tip drill." So all of, so very very romantic words. Yes. And uh. So the music video is quite graphic and it's basically just Nelly and his niggas around a bunch of women um, shaking their butts, topless, of some of them topless, and they're throwing money and pouring liquor on them, specifically at their asses. And there's this infamous scene um, near the end where... <laughs> where um, Nelly swiped a credit card and a girl's booty cheeks. And the video was so explicit that it was only shown on BET Uncut, which was like the late night BET where we saw like the real sauce. And um, in 2005, Nelly went on The View and they asked him about, like he went on The View to promote his movie, The Longest Yard, because, you know, men can do so many different things, <laughs> promote movies and be misogynist and just fun times. And um, they asked him if um, his music video depicted how he felt about women and his views on women and if he basically cared about the, w the way that women are portrayed and he said that there's a difference between entertainment and real life and he said that this is purely entertainment there's no connection to how he interacts with women in real life and he respects women and their voice but the thing is for those that are unaware of like the Nelly versus Spellman drama literally the year prior when Tip Drill was released Nelly had this fundraising event at Spelman College. Spelman, for those that don't know, it's a HBCU black women college. Like, it's a black uh, female school. And he was going to do, like, a fundraising... Like, he had a fundraising um, event, event yeah. that he had to do there, and he was invited. And the, the women were disgusted by the music video and were appalled and were protesting, like, what the hell? And then they said, you know what? If you come... Like, we'll let you have your fundraiser. Like, they were actually debating actually canceling his whole fundraiser altogether or having the fundraiser and not inviting him. And they told him, you know what? If you come, come have the fundraiser. But we want you to be part of the black, a black forum discussion on the depictions of women in hip hop. And he refused and he didn't go. So I think it's really interesting how it's like, oh, I respect women and their voices. But then when women are, sh you know, voicing their concerned about that he left them high and dry so um in the in the the essay the author says while nelly attempts to position his music videos as entertainment we know that music videos are nothing more than extended advertisements to sell music products these images showcase the lifestyle that nelly is trying to sell to the consumer market dominated by young white males the crisis in the sexual politics of black female commodification is that young men are buying the kool-aid that nelly and his contemporaries are selling and it is is evident in the rates of black female sexual abuse, public disbelief in black women who report incidents of sexual assault, rising rates of AIDS and HIV infection amongst black women, and perceptions of black women by the masses. Now, in any case, when women try to speak out, they will be silenced. Um, just like black women are silenced when they speak on sexual abuse and everything. So how much of it is just for show and how much of it is representative of our reality now, uh, my final point is talking about the taking control of the narrative. Now, this idea that I, because the, the, the thing with, and I, and I might be really messy with how I bring this up, so feel free to, like, cut me if it's not par rapport, but, like, a lot of, a lot of the ways that we, uh, we navigate certain whole adjacent activities it's with this idea that I'll do it but I won't go all the way like I won't I won't do it to the point where you can actually call me a whore but we participate in whore adjacent activities ouais, ouais. yeah but it's like the um, the web video Puis, um, yes. you, you see how they are over sexualized and Cardi B is still like 
I got that ring though. Yeah. Can we for sure to remind you because you can never be well, what's it bad? Full on whore. Whore. Yeah. Yeah. So not all video. So. Uh, not all videos there's the 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 narrative not all video vixens are treated badly some are respected some are not treated like whores now my question is why do we fear being whores so much um when we essentially know that escaping it is impossible like escaping the narrative of being a whore is essentially impossible why do we fear being whores so much and how does our journey to actively not be whores actually affect the lives of other black women and or specifically black women that participate in sex work mm -hmm. and how much is our desire to have control over that narrative and not be sexualized affect other black women so in that case we le let's look at the hierarchy of models like still uh, if we're looking at the video of extents we have the main girl like the main girl that is the one that is getting paid the most that is the one that is going to be in the close-ups that is the one that's going to have her solos and the one that's going to be mainly with the main the the rapper and the most famous main girl that we know is Melissa Ford. Melissa Ford OG, she was everywhere, booked everywhere. She and she has she's done a lot of interviews um in the video vix like about video vixens and video modeling and all of that and she has called herself like the queen of saying no. She said it interviews herself like I'm not a video ho. I'm a video model and there's a video ho like she she very well explained the difference between a video model and a video hoe and how she was not a video hoe. She was not a groupie. She was not a jump off. She was not one of those girls that had to be naked. She was not one of those girls that had to, you know, do some sexual acts in order to have a role. She was the respectable, uh, she was a respectable model. She was, she had her voice. She had full control over the way that she was depicted. If she didn't want to wear this bikini, she wouldn't. She wouldn't participate in whore-like behaviors. And she was basically in control. And she was one of the highest paid models and was very successful. However, even in this pursuit of not being a whore and even being vocally anti-whore, um, to uh, Corinne Stephens, we're gonna. She's just very. She's just a very interesting character. No, she is. She's very interesting. So Corinne Stephen is. Uh, Corinne Stephens is also one of the main girls of Ova. We cannot the deny that girl, yeah. she was a main girl in music videos. But the difference between her and Melissa Ford is that she was known as a hoe. Her nickname was Superhead. Like for those that don't know. <laughs> that's that's who she was and I don't think she was actually I don't think it it, it, it was necessarily a, a bad thing for her career or anything because she was booking these mu music videos and everything where shit went left for Corinne Steffens was when she released her tell-all book in 2005 exactly. basically exposing the ins and outs of the industry who she slept with who the other vixens were sleeping with and the whole community lost their fucking mind and like went like she was blackballed in black hip hop culture. Like no one has anything good to say about Karen Stephens in the hip hop world. She was so heavily slut shamed because people were saying, how dare you profit off of it? Which is really interesting because why not when this industry profits off of me all the time? Mm -hmm. So Melissa Ford was like very vocal about Karen Stephens as a hoe, all of that. So let's get back to Melissa. Um, even in her attempt to portray herself as, yes, I'm a video vixen. Yes, I participate in quote unquote whore like behaviors, but I'm not these bitches. She still managed to uh, be depicted as such. I'm going to and I'm going to break that down. Um, in 2006, the game released the song Wouldn't Get Far. And I actually really like that song. Like, I, I really, I'm so sorry. Like, misogyny has me by my fucking neck. But um, in that song, he has a verse where he said, oh, my God, I didn't even write that down. What did he say? Um, and all these new video bitches trying to be Melissa Ford, but they don't know Melissa Ford, Java Honda, Cord. She a video vixen. But behind closed doors, she do whatever it takes to get to the Grammy Awards. <laughs> yeah. And he said that. Check her face. Yeah, he said that. And that was in 2006, okay? And in 2019, uh, Melissa Ford went on an interview for, uh, like, a, a show by Claudia Jordan called Out Loud. And she talked about that song. And she talked about, she said, and I quote, not only have I never had a Honda Accord, 
<laughs> at the time the song came out i was driving a champagne colored mercedes benz 550 okay. um so and she was like uh, da, da, da. he named so many women gabrielle union gloria velez megan good he named like 20 girls melissa continued nobody is remembered from that song except me in 2006 that song destroyed my relationship because of the way people talked about me and corinne stefan's book solidified that i was a whore meanwhile i owned nothing the activities that she did that he was insinuating i didn't even know the game i only met him once and he, when he was one of 50 cents g unit soldiers all of this was my cross to bear and it was so difficult because no one stood up for me no one defended me just very very and it's not to say that i don't sympathize with her but at the same time it's like that song came out in 2006 and she's still talking about it in 2019 and it's like sis there is like just in doing my research i found so much footage of melissa ford being so horophobic it's not even funny to then you are met with the same realities because like i said it is impossible to escape that narrative so then we go into horophobia do you want to tap into that yeah because you said that when we know that we, we cannot escape the horror like allegation just a moment why do we keep like yeah. trying to but i think sincerely you come people believe that they can escape comme je pense que vraiment comme Melissa Ford est sûrement les confus je pense qu'elle est vraiment sincèrement she's fucking confused. clearly because 13 years confused. later she's yeah. dumped out like, no, 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 it was not me <laughs> comme elle est I, don't, I don't drive no Honda Accord <laughs> vraiment <laughs> that was not the damn the, like the 13 point. years later ouais ça, ça la chouc genre tu sais tu, tu penserais qu'elle soit tu penserais que elle serait en somme like You know, like it comes with the game. Yeah. Surtout après 13 ans, à un moment c'est comme, OK, ouais. And she was not ever really bashed ever. Oui, c'est ça. Mais tu sais, ça la shook to her core. Puis je pense que it, it says more on the way we treat actual whores. Mm -hmm. Like how badly mm -hmm. they are treated. Parce que si, if women are others, like the whores are vraiment like the others of the other fait que c'est vraiment à quel point des comme ils, ils sont reclus puis we look down on them puis je pense que when you're so low in that hierarchy genre tu white man white woman blah blah, blah puis black women are so low puis like you have this comme you feel like sûrement so, so like as a video vixen you feel like you reach that like image of womanhood comme c'est comme si tu veux plus être tiré par le bas parce que again 13 ans là I'm just like yeah Let it, like, let it go. Mais ça l'a, ça l'a vraiment. It yeah. really didn't. Ça, ça l'a vraiment comme shook. Puis c'est, puis tu sais, even though, even though, uh, c'est comme yeah, there's the video model and there's the video hole. Puis da da da. Mais c'est genre, you're in the same world. You're really in the same world. Même si c'est genre, okay, ça c'est toi, puis ça c'est elle. You're on the same set, like around the same people, doing the same thing, doing the same thing. Puis même, tu sais, qu'on a dit que uh, plutôt que uh, we, they were bringing strippers in again, puis c'est comme, oh, I'm not... Well, you're sitting just next to her. Yeah. So... Why we, not? We, why, pour de vrai, why not? Because you why? know the way that strippers are treated and you don't want that. But in us fighting the whore allegations, are we not further perpetuating violence against um, women that are let's say sex workers yeah that's what it is and that guys is whore phobia so the definition the definition of whore phobia is the hatred of oppression of violence towards and discrimination against sex workers and by extension derision or disgust towards activities or attire related to sex work so when we fear being depicted as whores The underlying fear, whether we like to admit it or not, is to be treated like a sex worker mm -hmm. because we all inadvertently know how they're treated. And it adds to them. And like I said, it adds to the mistreatment um, that sex workers face. And it's also not a profitable way of thinking as black women, because once again, you cannot escape the whore allegations. This is historically it's it's. It's, it's, it's such a historical thing that you cannot dismantle it if we don't dismantle white supremacy. As long as white supremacy is, is prevalent, your depiction, uh, uh, you're this close to being called a whore. Yeah, this close. Yeah. Um, so in the, in the article, Representations of Hustling 
women, the figure of the black sex worker uh, in Anne Petrie's The Street and Louise Merriweather Daddy was a number one runner, c'était très long comme titre, um, an article by Deborah L. Usurin. Um, like I said, slavery was abolished in 1808. Black women were now seen as critical economic function for plantation owners. Um, so they created the Jezebel stereotype. Now, when navigating a post-slavery world, black women found it very, very hard to find jobs, obviously. And the main things that were, the, 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 the most accessible job was sex work. However, because of the, because of wanting to be disassociated so badly with the stereotypes put on them by their oppressors, not only did they not look at sex work as a, a career choice, but they were anti-sex work. Black women were very actively anti-sex work, and that was and that was their way of detaching from the harmful um, abuse that they had faced, knowing that these stereotypes were put against them. So, but and and what was the opposite of hating sex work? It was chasing this idea of femininity this idea of femininity yeah. and womanhood however what we need to understand about womanhood is that this model was not designed with black women in mind and chasing it would result in uh, most black women failing miserably yeah you cannot but no it's not just because it Create without black women in mind, y'all like, oh, we forgot. No, it's again, like, <laughs> it's, again. it's created. <laughs> it's, it's literally, again. It's, 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 yeah, c'est it's, 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 it's on purpose. So, c'est genre trying to fight et tout. First of all, you, you're drowning, puis c'est comme t'arrives nulle part. Right. It's always circle back to the, well, you hear, ça me fait penser à, like, when, um, Summer Walker was going back and forth with the baby mamas, but they come, like, yeah, no, da, 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 how can we blow up? And as they retrouvé dans la même situation, she was like, shit. Yeah. Come, it doesn't, you, you don't go anywhere like, doing that. We, oui, come, you just don't. Pete, it's you, really you? No, vas-y, vas-y. Dans le fond, with the ideology, like, there's an ideology of what womanhood was, like, an ideology about women that was circulating in the mid 19th century. So this was basically. The, it's called the culture of domesticity or the cult of true womanhood. And basically what that means is that in order for you to be to be classified as a true woman, you needed to possess these four things. So that's piety, so basically like religion, Christianism, whatever. Um, purity, submissiveness, and domesticity. But er, like early on, we can see that this is not... Uh, a system that black women can participate in because purity, you can't be pure when you are looked at as a whore and that is the that is the image that is put up upon you. You cannot be whore, you cannot be pure. You cannot be submissive because black women were not looked at as soft or whatever. They were looked at as angry and harsh and independent, independent and can tolerate pain and can tolerate abuse and can tolerate all of the bad things in the world so you can't be submissive and then domesticity you can't be domesticated because you black women have always worked black women have always labored and worked and a lot of the times were the main breadwinners in their family because black men couldn't find jobs so this idea that the woman stays at home and the man works was not a model that black women at the time could follow so all of these four characteristics of what is true womanhood black women cannot achieve that like they just cannot achieve that and the idea of true womanhood solely relied on the ideologies and stereotypes around blackness in order for white women to show that they are a contrast against oh. yeah. the image of the black woman and there's and the way that they're being perceived so whiteness is basically a contrast of uh the stereotypes placed on black women Essentially, and it's the base for ho for womanhood. Fact, you're déjà you're 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 already out. Yeah, you're already out. Okay, um, now I'm, I want to follow with the internet girl. P, can we the internet girl? It's gonna be down the line IG baddies. But I'm gonna do a little contrast of like what happened when the just the video vixen era died down. Like what happened? Um, when we talked about when we talked about video vixen. Um, ce qui est intéressant, comme on l'a dit, c'est l'exclusivité. Est-ce le fait que, oh, it's the it girl, who is she, le mystère autour, like she's so comme, pretty, gorgeous, etc., etc., etc. 
and it became it died down when justement everybody could be that girl like um, n'importe qui pouvait être dans les music video etc etc et c'est comme why would I pay you when I can get her p uh, so so on so forth um, puis um, dans le fond quand on wow <laughs> wow mais cette histoire de accessibilité faisait perdre de l'argent aux vidéos vixen but the internet girl gave money because she is accessible. Puis, l'image de la femme, l'image de la femme is something that was inaccessible for a while. Quand on parle, et ça fait partie de justement de la féminité. Quand on parle de um, the art, like French art, like the, la femme était au milieu de la piece, she was the muse, she was inaccessible. C'était aussi une histoire de classe, la bourgeoisie et tout. When these pictures became available to everybody parce que the print was invented, it became porn. Tout d'un coup, she's not as virtuous. Everybody has her, everybody has a pic. Puis c'est vraiment, I think that's un peu the idea of the internet. Like, everybody has, has access to any girl. Um, Puis il y a même les développements technologiques were because people wanted to have access to women. Quand on parle à uh, the Rolling Stone arm, an article par rapport like how the nipple gate um, created YouTube. So basically, YouTube a été créé parce que les gens recherchaient la vidéo de um, Janet Jackson en 2004 at the Super Bowl when uh, the we they, they had a nip slip avec Justin Timberlake and like she was blackballed out of the industry, etc., etc. And literally, c'était vraiment comme three bros. Three white men, c'est comme, oh man, I, j'aimerais vraiment voir, <laughs> j'aimerais vraiment retrouver la vidéo, it's hard to find. And because of that, because there was no platform to was just like Google and like find the videos, ils ont créé YouTube. YouTube was literally created because of Janet Jackson, like because of her trauma, because of what she experienced. Puis, um, and because people wanted to have access to a woman, like, like le nipple n'est pas resté out longtemps là pour que yeah. les gens soient comme obsessed mais that created that puis même chose avec um, dans les début des années 2000 um, Jenny, Jennifer Lopez elle a, elle a the dark green dress yeah. the Versace <laughs> the Versace dress mais non roule les yeux parce que she, elle a oh. she, elle a juste porté too many times afterwards but quand la première fois qu'elle a porté, it was something. Like, les gens étaient juste comme, yo, what the hell? In the time, elle était encore avec PDD. And like, people were just like, wow, she's so gorgeous. C'est tout. Puis, elle est, je pense que les gens ont oublié que she was even nominated. This is just comme, wow. Like, Jennifer Lopez in that dress. Elle est montée, elle a parlé. Sending ovation. Yeah. <laughs> Et dans les interviews, Jennifer Lopez, quand ça regarde, elle est juste comme, I was really confused as of why yeah. people were so hang up on that just, but people were. Puis tellement so, que comme, they were doing research, puis ça, c'était tellement comme une recherche um, populaire que les gens de Google were like, wait a minute, like, people really want to see that picture, people really want to find that picture, let's create like a platform so people can find pictures, puis c'est comme ça que Google search image came to be. So, Back then, tu pouvais pas juste quand tu googlais something, it was links. It was only links. Là maintenant, tu Google something, les images sont en haut. Before even que tu vas dans Google search, but before it was not like that. It was only link. Puis tu cliques jusqu'à ce que un blog maybe has the right picture. But again, because um, J Lo, justement, people wanted that picture. People wanted wanted to have access to her. De, ça a avancé comme ça a créé une avancée technologique. So l'accessibilité and technology, genre l'accessibilité à l'image de la femme and technology are really linked. Um, and the same way it was the downfall of the video vixen, but it was the same way that genre it was a gain for the justement les filles qui sont venues après, which IG bodies, mais je, je parle de IG, Tumblr. Snapchat, all the girls who come, came to be après dans, dans cette ère-là, because they were accessible, now it was different. It's, c'était pas genre, oh, I wish I was her. C'est en somme, let me show you how you can be me mm. so I can sell you things. Mm-hmm. So c'est genre, the, the tea, tummy tuck, whatever, whatever. Je peux, te, je peux te vendre n'importe quoi because you want to be me, puis I 
gave you access. Like, I was obsessed with Taz and Jules, comme on bon Snapchat. Team. Yo, moi là, j'étais juste... <rire> en plus, c'était vraiment... It was really graphic. Je me souviens, c'était vraiment graphique. Je les voyais toutes nues, puis tout, puis... Et puis, j'étais juste comme, wow. <rire> and none of these hoes was black saying, nigga, left and right. <rire> Tellement près. <rire> Il n'y en a même pas une. <laughs> Il y a même une petite métisse. Was she black? I uh, maybe, think, yeah. she, maybe she... I think like it was a little like... But hard. yo... You're multiracial. Mais j'étais vraiment... I was really... <laughs> j'étais vraiment, vraiment focus. Puis c'est aussi le, le era, genre le... So on va dire, les vidéos vaccines... Video vaccines ont... It ends like 2009, 2010. Et en 2007, c'est là que um, The Kardashian come, came to be... Puis, euh, on sait tout le, 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 le mixtape. Le mixtape. Le mixtape. <rire> le mixtape. Le mixtape. Le sextape. Yeah. De Kim. Puis, like, justement, ce, 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 cet accès qu'on a, qu qu a eu, qu'on qu nous a donné justement pour avoir accès à ces femmes-là, c'est comme ça que ces filles-là capitalisent. Fait que, to be honest, they kind of, they kind of, ils sont presque dans une meilleure situation que les the vidéos vixen were parce que They, maintenant, elles peuvent faire des brand deals and are paid millions and millions and millions of dollars to mm -hmm. sell you their image and to make you feel, justement, ce que tu voulais faire when you were little, like, be, like, Melissa Ford, c'est comme, I can give you the step. Like, one, two, three, follow mon IG, follow mon YouTube channel, you right there, puis tu prends des notes, and you buying things, you buying things. Fait que c'est vraiment, dans le fond, la femme est devenue une commodité, yes, but the she making profit out of it. Mm -hmm. Fait est-ce que, justement, est-ce que, puis, tu sais, les, les, euh, quand on parle de vraiment IG bodies, puis, je vais même pas mettre trop l'emphase de Kardashian parce que I feel like the IG bodies look, it was, it really comes from Video Vixen. Video Vixen. Comme yeah. c'est vraiment clair, je sais que, people, genre, the Kardashian re, remontait comme, revenait beaucoup dans la discussion, but I'm like, it's, no, it's really a black visual, and so much show que c'est dans ces années-là, comme 2013, 2014, qu'on parlait de cultural appropriation. But the reason why I think it was so comme, common and everything, parce que le look de la fille, the internet girl, the IG body, was from black people. Fait que les autres, de base, they were doing, the, trying to do the same thing or trying to have the same look. Mm -hmm. Puis, dans, aussi, dans le temps, il y avait les... Il y a Amber Rose. J'ai réécouté des interviews de Amber Rose. I still like her. She's a bird, but I really like her. She's a bird, but I love her. I can't. <laughs> Amber Rose, Black China. Comme, encore une fois, c'est des filles que c'est comme... Les, on, on les connaît parce que they were with so-and-so, with Kanye, with Taiga, who created a name for themselves. Les vidéos vexées n'ont pas pu... They, they could not, like... Genre, ils n'ont pas pu drag ça. C'est comme, some became rappers, but vraiment, vraiment, quickly, les, le reste, on just, on va aller, comme, ils sont allés à l'oubli. But now, with the internet, c'est comme, tu te sais, c'est genre, tu pouvais vraiment être comme, oh, who's that girl, who's that girl, who's that girl? Puis là, elle, 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 elle fait un IG. Dans, dans le temps, puis maintenant, IG is not popping like that. Mm. It's harder. <laughs> It's harder. Mais c'est comme, tu fais un compte, puis je dis, yeah, follow me. Like, here's who I am. Puis c'est genre, elle, on leur donne des deals, elles sont ici, elles sont là, and you don't even question it anymore. It's like, it's Amber Rose, like, yeah, she's that, that, she's that girl. Um, Bernice Bergosi, love her. Yeah. <laughs> Puis, es, yeah, and then, what I want to, the angle that I want to, que je veux approcher with these women, c'est, ce que tu tiens à mentionner, on parlait de, uh, de la Jezabel, mais Jezabel and how it, c'est cette perception de la Jézabel, de comme, comment on perçoit les femmes noires, nous mène à penser que comme « there are bad mothers ». Genre, when, we, when you look at IG bodies, puis je ne sais pas pourquoi le, 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 le um, title de « baby mama » est souvent attaché « because they were with this rapper and they're not with them anymore and they have like a kid ». Puis souvent, c'est genre « oh, you're too sexual to have a kid or to be a good mother ». Puis les gens se sentent très, très, très à l'aise à donner leur two cents, genre, « Oh, you have a kid, and you're doing this, that, that. You have a kid, and you're acting that way. » Puis, comme je me souviens, en, like, 2015, like, Ambrose was freshly 
come divorce, not separated with Wiz. And elle a, she put a picture. And maintenant, si vous voyez la photo, it's like, it's nothing parce que on, we're seeing them too much. But that breaks the internet. Genre, la photo was everywhere. Je pense qu'elle est, est sur son balcon and she's like, she's arching a little. Puis à chaque fois qu'elle allait en entrevue, il parlait de la photo. Puis là, là, it breaks the internet. Yada, yada. Puis il y avait beaucoup de commentaires sur like, oh, but you're a mother. You're a mother. How can you do that? How can you like act like, like this way? Puis il y a une grosse conversation quand on parle des femmes noires being bad mothers and how like elles sont le downfall justement of the black community because they are bad mothers et la façon dont c'est approché j'ai l'impression qu'on pense que it comes from us que comme c'est une critique que on est venu avec but it's a, c'est une critique qui est that as white supremacist like mm-hmm. white people said it first puis je veux vraiment que vous le reteniez I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot some quotes, mais c'est genre, white people said it first, mm-hmm. et vous le regurgitez every freaking day. Puis mm-hmm. je parle vraiment là, au Kevin Samuelette là, mm-hmm. and vous pensez que comme, it's, yeah, ouais, they are bad, but no, 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 it's a white, it's a, it's a white man. You're quoting the white man. Congrats. Mm. <laughs> Congrats. Euh, parce que le, dans le fond, le stéréotype de la femme, de la mauvaise mère, qui est put on black woman, it's not new. So, quand tu remontes à, justement, um, slavery days, always, slavery days, we know that, justement, black women did not have access to womanhood. They were not seen as women at all. Ils étaient vraiment même des anomalies. Dans le, le livre que j'ai référé, c'est uh, Killing the Body, à uh, Dorothy Roberts, qui est professeur de Lyon Society, uh, and, yeah, droit et société, et qui parle justement de comment... Le, tout le livre parle vraiment de comment la femme noire était... Euh, a, était comme... Ses, ses organes de, production, de reproduction étaient contrôlés. So, ça parle de, justement de comment elle était députée, oversexualized, how, to, like how the government, the community, et tout a quelque chose à dire sur le like, fait that she's, she has, she's having kids, she's not having kids, etc. etc. And she, what, she's, what she's saying is, from the beginning, she was seen as a bad mother parce que une mère c'est vraiment un c'est un des titres qui est très virtuous c'est comme wow you are you are a mother like comme penser à la genre à la vierge marie like mothers are seeing like that comme mm-hmm. si c'est you're virtuous you can do no wrong but because black women were encore une fois sexualized il y a le Jezebel stigma comme elles veulent avoir du sexe tout le temps they cannot control themselves well they cannot control their kid as well. So, yeah, je vais dire le nom du monsieur, um, un historien qui s'appelle Bruce A. Phillips. Mm-hmm. Bruce A. Phillips, qui a, um, he came out with a book in, en 1889 qui s'appelle The Plantation Negro as Freeman. So, après que justement, slaves were set free, free, like, les, um, les intellectuels blancs, les sociologistes blancs ont Re, comme ils ont ils sont allés plus fort avec les stéréotypes like here's why the negro is this way like or act that way puis lui il y avait deux chapitres en entier dans son livre dédié to black women and the reason why they're bad mothers and why also they are the cause of the downfall of the community like black mothers why comme c'est à cause c'est à cause d'elles que le taux de criminalité dans les communautés noires est so high because mm-hmm. she cannot um, control her kid. C'est aussi à cause que she never says yes, she never says no to sex, que comme black men do not have lack boundaries uh, when it comes to sexual approach and go see white women and rape white women. So they, they are the cause, like, comme si it's the black woman. Puis c'est vraiment, it's really, je trouve que c'est vrai, en lisant ça, it was so insane, je comme, mais c'est mot pour mot, it's literally mot pour mot, what people are saying, genre, oh, black women, c'était même écrit, they were even saying, like, ce même historien, genre, black women are too independent, c'est pour ça que l'homme est pas bien à la maison, and he never comes back, and that's exactly what people are saying, genre, that is, that's what Yeah, word for word. word. Word for bar. Word for bar. Quoting that white man all the time. <laughs> <Toujours>. <laughs> comme, 
Mais c'est vraiment, c'est de, ça, ça part de là, genre, le livre a été, encore une fois, je vous rappelle, 1889. Know, comme, he didn't know anything about Twitter, and still, les rhétoriques sont vraiment comme copy-paste. The only, the only um, virtuous, quote-unquote, um, um, il a l'image de choses que comme on donnait aux femmes noires dans le temps when it comes to motherhood and what is when they were taking care of white children so the mm. mommy c'est c'est juste réservé aux enfants blancs it has nothing to do with her kid so the mommy is she elle est douce and she's taking care of white children and she, she's not sexual anymore no. cuz now she's the mommy the mommy stereotype and a lot of uh, and the a lot of white women found comfort in the mammy stereotype because it allowed them to not feel threatened as well by black women. Come, it's it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Puis c'est uh, encore une fois c'est la seule façon où elle pouvait um, comme atteindre une, une sorte de vertu. But it's not even womanhood because the mammy is asexual. Comme c'est vraiment un être asexual with no gender. Elle est juste a good. Negro puis, and yeah. take care of white children. That's all comme, uh, you need to know. Puis on, tu le vois depicted justement in white movies, like, like Gun with the Wind, genre, il y a toute cette image de like, the black woman who's just there to take care of other white people. Puis c'est elle que, they, ils ont même créé une association, like, for the, like, mommies, like, yeah, that's the good Negro, that, that's what we want to see. Mais pour de vrai, I don't even think that they make a connection with this comme ce personnage yeah. and black woman mm. to be frank parce que la façon dont ils en parlaient like no. two different person yeah. two 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 different person yeah. so dans le le de allégation donc l'allégation que je trouve que comme that that is pushed on IG bodies or like the internet girl is or oh, you cannot be a good woman like you are not that woman a hey, guys to be honest i feel like black women played a lot dans ce narrative narrative we have to hold ourselves accountable c'est intense it's really pour de vrai c'est intense i'm i'm talking genre j'ai dit i i, I just j'ai dit que comme ouais les gars dit ça non but récemment i feel like the girls are worse yeah like, elles sont no and that's really what we're here to talk about <laughs> i feel like we don't try you niggas yeah <laughs> I, anyway, I'm going to be a wife. Like, how can... Mm, Lee, I'm going to be a wife. I'm not a rapper, baby mama. The way people are treating, like, Jada... And Ari. Un, Ari. Unprovoked. 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 Genre, oh, no, I'm not, I don't want to be like them. C'est encore... I think it's, again, black women fighting the, genre, the whore allegation. Because if you're not a wife, you're a whore. Like, like the idea of being a wife is really, really tied to womanhood. He, I think the, the phenomenon of being a mama can, like you can explain it in so many ways, like you were talking about like black men being like in jail, like really like overrepresented and everything. Like we don't really talk about the same things as the like white people. And still, it's that your... It's like, that's what we're going for. Like, that's standard. the narrative. That's the like, narrative. That's what we're doing. Exactly. Puis il y avait, il y a même un, there's a there's a black sociologist qui a renforcé aussi cette cette narrative. It's not it's not even all white people. But il y avait un, un noir. Un, I forgot. J'ai pas écrit son nom. Mais qui um, qui a aussi renforcé cette idée que comme yes, like, the black woman is is uh, problematic and she needs to get married. Or il faut que comme elle se marie if she want to fix the whole community puis tous les problèmes qui viennent avec genre having like the kids and the men and everything genre the the weight was, is really put on black women mm. it, it comes from others and it comes from us as well even though genre on l'a dit dans notre épisode you're always the next one like you're always t'es toujours à ça de be like the baby mama The whore, the so I a plus to like look down upon like these girls. Why are you not like uplifting them? Uplifting, Come, yeah. Be, that's the thing, and mind you, we understand that black women trying to stray away so badly from the image of a whore to the point where they're actually 
putting down other black women violently i understand that the root of it is survival i get that but i don't think that's good enough anymore when mono play mono play <laughs> Um, it's not i don't think it's good enough anymore like i think we it's i think it's time for us to also be like okay i understand it's survival i understand that i'm trying to reach this ideal because i don't like no one wants to be no one wants to be treated like that but i think instead of focusing on not wanting to be treated like whores if our priority was to come to actually to be in community with sex workers or women that are associated with this quote unquote image if our if we were more focused on seeing how we can be in community with them rather than straying away from them i think that we would be in a better place definitely see this um if we if we go back again and like post slavery days black women were terrified of being associated with sex work again because they had just experienced all of this uh, they they had just experienced all of this trauma at the hands of um their slave masters and they understand what stereotypes were placed on them they they were very very much aware and the goal was to escape from that as much as possible and practice racial uplift so for those that are unaware of what racial uplift is it's basically this idea that educated blacks are responsible for the welfare of the majority of the race and that was a response to the assault on african american civil and political rights in the late 19th and early uh, early 20th century So basically respectability politics and black women showed racial uplift in many ways uh, regarding the, the uh, their views on sex work, specifically through literature um, and like post uh, uh, Great Depression times, black women authors were very vocal about being anti sex work through their novels, through their writings. Um, and one of the books, uh, an example of one of, of one of those stories is Anne Petrie's um, In the Street book. And it's basically about this black girl named Ludi. She's a single black mother. She lives in Harlem. She has an eight-year-old. And she's living in post-depression era. And it's basically following her and her struggles facing racism and misogyny. And she wants to escape that so badly. Like she's very, very much aware of the, of the, uh, the systems that are oppressing her. And her, her goal is to live a decent life. And she tries to follow and achieve this model of middle-class respectability, but it's not designed for her. And throughout the story, she's being kicked down every single chance she get. Finding employment is very difficult. And she has, she was offered the opportunity to participate in sex work and she was completely opposed to it. And which she still faced a lot of sexual assault, like a, a lot of sexual abuse. She faced sexual abuse. She faced sexual harassment despite having these like harsh, like anti-sex work views. The odds were all against her. She was still being treated the same way that of the image that she's trying so badly, actively trying so, so badly to escape from. And then she had her husband. Her husband was unemployed. Uh, he couldn't find employment. And then she, com- she comes home. She's, she's, he has another woman. She has to, and then uh, a, an older white woman uh, gave her advice and told her, you know what, like a, a, tr- a true woman shouldn't be out here working. Like you should be at home and let your man do that. And it's like, And she's like, but it's not made for you. Like this idea of womanhood. And I'm not saying, it's just we need to understand that the root the root of womanhood was 100% designed against blackness. Everything is a social construct. Every single thing is a social construct. Everything is constructed. And the idea of this is womanhood, this is masculinity, all of that was created for a reason. And um, so basically she was having issues, uh, having uh, employment and all of that. And she really had a really hard time. And um, at the end, it's like, war, it's, it's 100% your choice to choose to not participate in sex work. And, and she decided to go for like domestic labor instead. But she, like, she was still assaulted. Like she was still harassed. She was still treated as a whore, despite her doing everything in her power to gain this social mobility, to, to follow the rules of femininity. She tried to do everything by the book. She got a job. She did everything she had to do, but she was still not treated properly. And this judgment that we have on sex work further pushes the narrative that black sex workers are disposable, um, especially in a world where black sex workers are disproportionately More. getting arrested and killed compared to others. 
we're not helping. We're not helping right now at all. Like we're not helping with our horophobic views, and I and I don't think we realize that in the ways that we talk and the way that we navigate things. So and when we look at horophobia, we need to link it specifically to blackness because it's a completely different concept when we look at horophobia and blackness because black quote unquote whores are treated ten times worse. Mm -hmm. And um in in the in the article that I quoted earlier, it says under the weight of systemic racism, discrimination, and sexism, black women experienced a dual oppression uh, oppression by being both black and women, black sex workers were further weighed down by criminalization and persistent horophobia. Horophobia is a form of slut shaming and a common term used by contemporary sex workers. Well, I already explained that. And black sex workers are the most marginalized in society because their labor is seen as exploitative and immoral. Um, and the working class African Americans shunned labor that bypassed city ordinance, such as sex work, because they adamantly refused to compromise their dignity, self respect, and neighborhood reputation for economic stability. Black women have always felt the need to defend themselves against these allegations, historically speaking. But now, how much have we gained from that? I think. Okay, I think la première chose que we should do. <laughs> C'est, tu sais, comme, tu sais ce que tu as dit tantôt, tu as dit que it's not enough anymore to just be like, oh, I'm struggling too, so I'm hurting, like, I'm just hurting everybody around mm -hmm. parce que I'm trying to survive. I feel like with, like, being a black woman, with being, like, what's been bother, bothering me, comme récemment, c'est le fait que, genre, being a black woman is enough. Mm -hmm. Dans le sens que, on va dire, um, Oh, I trust black women, or oh, um, black women are this, or black women are that. Genre, they're loving, they're this, that. But this can exist, but we can also be wrongdoers. Mm. It's not true that like black women never do anything wrong. I feel like we, genre, on dit jamais parce que we feel like we have we, genre, being we are being attacked so much. Yeah, but but it's not even genre wrong to others but wrong entre nous so c'est comme it's not enough to just like oh it's a black woman i trust her or, oh it's a black woman I, like il faut vraiment prendre conscience que comme you can be you can be black, a black woman and do like harm genre harm t'es pas une éternelle victime it's not true genre we go back and forth entre like uh, perpetuating violence And receiving violence, always, always. Fait que c'est pas juste une victime, une victime, une victime, une victime. Et tu prends, tu prends une black woman, take so much. True, but black women do harm others. Black women do, like, perpetue des stéréotypes ou perpetue, like, like, horephobia or any, or homophobia. Oh my God, yes. Biophobia, the, biophobia. the debates that we yeah, see. Yeah, it's not cute. It's not cute. Fait que c'est juste comme être, oh, I'm a black woman and it's, it's fine. It's really... You know, it's lazy at best, but vraiment cruel at worst. Parce que it's, ça nous, ça justement, <laughs> ça nous enlève toutes sortes of accountability. But it's, it's, pas que it's okay to do harm. <laughs> c'est pas ça que je veux dire. But it's, c'est normal que comme, you're, c'est normal, if you're human, puis que tu marches dans cette, cette planète, you're gonna harm someone else. Le but, c'est vraiment d'être, okay, d'être conscient que comme, oh, I can, Harm others as well. Oh, j'ai blessé quelqu'un d'autre. So now, what am I doing to do better? Yeah. Comme on a vraiment, like, black women are being put on that pedestal, comme si we cannot, on n'a rien à se reprocher, because we're so low, on est tellement low dans la hierarchy, we cannot hurt no one. But that's not, again, yeah. that's not true. Fait que je pense que c'est le. Le être conscient que comme, oh, I can be a wrongdoer. Puis, I already know que genre, quand on regarde, on va dire, when you look up, qu'est-ce qui est um, en haut de toi, I feel like black women, ils vont plus admettre que comme, oh, I did wrong by this black man, que comme, oh, I did wrong by, by this sis. other black woman. Yeah, c'est ça. Genre, ça, on, je trouve que we miss that a lot. Yeah. Genre, oui, il y a beaucoup d'accolades, il y a beaucoup de, we love each other, il y a beaucoup de, il y a, il n'y a pas assez de genre « I did wrong by you yeah. ». Ou juste, même si tu le dis pas à la personne, juste être consciente de like « I did wrong by this person, how can I be better? How can I do better? » Yeah. So, I think when we, 
if we go back to um, our fears of being a hoe, I think there's such a there's such a tug of war tug of war happening because we understand as black women that in order to be desirable and in order to be seen as worthy, you do need to be sexual because this idea of pretty and femininity is not necessarily designed. It's not created For with you, yeah. with us in mind. So it's this idea of okay. I want to be seen as desirable, so I want to be sexy, but then, and I want to, and I'm going to participate in whore adjacent behaviors, but I won't push the envelope and go all the way there to be seen because you don't want to be seen as, as a hoe. And it's, I feel like we're constantly kind of just navigating that. And I think, I think the reason, but it's like you said, I think it's really just that, You you want to be feminine? Yeah, like you that's what is feminine. that's what it is. It's like really we're, we're chasing wanna be, femininity. It's, it's really, this is this is really all it is. Yeah, like, you want to be feminine. You want to be desired. You even if to be honest, womanhood and femininity as a whole is another box box qui est pas nécessairement genre fun to be in. But because it's not even a reality, je pense qu'on on est même pas là. Oh, ouais. C'est vraiment some like I want to be feminine. P. But justement, I feel like if you Okay, if you have to be just whole adjacent pour genre être comme considéré like feminine, I feel like you should have more compassion for the whole que, que tu es en train de simuler. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah. at this point, si, puis tu sais, maintenant c'est tellement rendu intense parce que même les hills, like les big, strip les hills. big, ouais, strip hills que comme on achète ou même at some point, les gens disaient comme, oh, what is comme what is this dress ou non 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 il y a plein de trous puis ils disaient là puis ils étaient juste puis like shippers were like well that's our dresses don't come and buy it and be in the street puis là après tout d'un coup c'est comme oh be be elders be be elders da 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 but like like we that's been our that's been our thing c'est comme on je sais pas on 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 we we're really fighting to be in that line genre wanting to be desired knowing that this is the only way that you can be desired yeah. but still not want to be a hoe like yeah. really still not want to be associated in any way measure the whole whole aesthetic is fun like you see it's fun and it's come it's like you it's it's this idea of like we can switch it on and off like well, we can exactly messy come how be, how beneficial is that like We tap into it when we choose to, and then it's like, oh, okay, but now I choose to, 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 to exit out of it. I think, um, but it's all, re it's, it's, it, it all comes down to the same thing. And there's this quote um, by Patricia Hill Collins, shout out, great author. Um, and she says, so the, we call into question the complexity of differentiating between what Patricia Hill Collins calls the representation of black women who are sexually liberated and those who are sexual objects their bodies on sale for male enjoyment and her discussion of her sexual politics of defining bitch as a trope of black female femininity collins argues that whether a black woman fucks for pleasure drugs revenge or money the sexualized bitch uh constitutes a modern day version of the jezebel repackaged for contemporary mass media it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter the reason it doesn't matter why you decided it doesn't matter if you decided to wear this quote unquote slutty dress just for this night out just for just, just for, for my birthday just like, for my just. birthday <laughs> like it doesn't it, it doesn't matter come it, it i just find it interesting okay 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 but on fait quoi genre I don't know. Like, are we telling every? Like, I don't know. What do we do? Like, what do we do? Because que I feel like and another truc justement that's hard to do. I feel like between black women, it's the call. Okay, okay. How do you approach a black woman that do you wrong? Mm. Est-ce que genre tu fais un tweet? Est-ce que tu la DM? If you DM her, puis ça fonctionne pas. Like, what do you do? Because tu sais quand on parle beaucoup de accountability, like hold ourselves accountable, hold, like, the people of, like, of your community accountable. But the first thing you can, again, to be part, hold accountable someone that is not part of your community. And I want, I really want to stress that out. And it, it's not every black person that is part of my community. So I do not really care. I'm really, je suis vraiment désolé. I don't really care to call in everybody. Il y a des gens que I'm going to take, je vais prendre le temps de genre, 
OK, like, genre, on va dire... Oh, on va dire si tu fais quelque chose. Tu es trop proche de moi. <coughs> Mais juste someone that I like. Pour de vrai, juste someone that I kind of like, genre. Um, je ne vais pas nécessairement juste comme... Like, trop chez ou genre, yeah. te tag. Like, I'm going to call you in. Yeah. I'm going to say, yo, genre, ça, c'était bizarre. Yeah. Tu peux faire, genre, mieux. Yeah. Um, but I feel like a black woman pretends a lot to be a community. Genre, everybody yeah. loves each other. But it's not. <laughs> Mais personne, personne, like, nobody does that. Genre, j'ai pas l'impression que, comme, people call, call you in. It's like on some I like you one day shade the other day and it's okay genre ça peut arriver elle est comme OK ma bad et tout mais c'est genre how how do we become the community that we want to be All I know is we do have to include whores <laughs> and we that. do <laughs> we do and I I think we have to start looking at sex work as just any other form of labor and it's hard and even even us in our episode on deconstructing i feel like we were messy and ouais, ouais, oh we my were. god je voulais, oh, je voulais, je voulais, i wanted to point that oh out my, no we were oui. messy and and that's what i love that we can go back and be like <laughs> no nah, not nah, but i feel like we were messy in our approach i feel like um but actually someone did approach yeah us par rapport à ça, two people comme, approached us on two? that yeah damn okay i missed one dm yeah but we were really approached to be like just like say Guys, we're talking about our episode. Um, what is it? What's the name? Deconstruct- Deconstructing thing. quelque chose. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> someone, we were drinking. <laughs> <laughs> we were drinking. Mais il y avait um, tu on a tu elles ont elles ont dit puis c'est des gens qui sont dans l'industrie fait que c'était juste comme guys maybe not like maybe not puis je pense que c'est vraiment fair parce que even though we were quoting uh, like one, a sex worker, on peut pas vraiment make our own decision because yeah. we are not a sex worker. On n'est pas dans l'industrie. We didn't, we, on, on l'a pas été. Fait que c'est comme qu'on donne nos two cents without having like sex workers there Yeah, and I feel like we were was talking a little on, off. And I feel like we were talking on some like let's not glamorize sex work but on our, as, as we were talking about let's not glamorize sex work, I feel like we, I don't know. I think, ouais, non, je pense, je, je sais, 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 Can be slut shaming, genre. Where ça, I'm ça, ça peut comme tomber dans le genre. Yeah. Don't be, don't glamorize it because you don't want to be in. Mais c'est, c'est. En and, tout cas. And one thing that, one thing that I, one thing that I read in, um, in the, the long ass essay that I was reading last night is, uh, just this, it was just this short sentence and I feel like it made so much sense. Um, Whether sex work is empowering or not is independent to the sex worker's experience. Yeah. And that's really, all that it is and honestly even when we're looking at like post uh like uh, uh, uh the depression era when a lot of black women were um very anti sex work and just wanted to do domestic work there were also a lot of black women that are like that were like i'm not about to fucking clean no houses i'm i i would prefer sex work a lot of black women were like i personally would prefer sex work than to break my back breaking a sweat washing the dishes cleaning the house and that was fully their choice and Like, like I said, whether sex work is empowering or not is in- independent to the sex worker's experience. And for a lot of uh, black women and a lot of minorities, it is oftentimes a, 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 a more, a, depending on like your ge- geographical situation and everything, it's often a more accessible and profitable uh, way of getting income. And again, there is no labor under capitalism that, that is, is not exploitative. This- So c'est, let's keep that in mind, and that's what I, I think we, we should have oui, added c'est last ça, time. C'est ça, je pense que c'est ça, parce que dans le fond, it, pas que it doesn't matter, que comme, it matters justement que le, le sex work is, que c'est, um, que il se fasse exploiter, like, and the question should be like, what can we do to prevent that? To prevent that, to, so the girls can be safe. Oui, c'est, c'est tout là, c'est, c'est tout. Ça, ça, that's, that's the narrative. The only thing. That's, what, that's the only that thing. That should have been our angle. Yeah. You see, that's that's the narrative. Yeah. Puis c'est ça qu'on doit se dire every day. It's like as as women that are not sex workers, 
what can we do to make their to make them feel more safe instead of constantly trying to move up and trying to chase this unattainable standard and it might seem attainable to you and i see it so many like i see it so often especially like recently i was talking to beck about this like i don't know like where it came from this repackaged like patriarchy that we're seeing everywhere with like the clean girl aesthetic and the classy girl and i'm not getting long nails no more i'm getting all of that i'm getting short i'm nails. getting short nails i'm a classy when you girn. know your worth yeah, I mean, you have a whole video when you know when you're you know with, it, we, it, was, it was the same color same dresses like, we, 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 <laughs> it was the same thing like oh well dressing now that I know my worth it's like it's, 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 it's like it's, so it's instead of trying to chase this standard because I see it all and this shit makes me cringe like these this this new found content that I'm seeing of like the this the black femininity movement and wear dresses and pink dresses and go to these like high-end cafes to meet this like it's like instead of chasing this unattainable standard because at the end of the day it says you a you you a nigga gonna call you a bitch regardless regardless so instead of trying to appeal to people that have already predetermined who you are why not kind of look at the shorties that are there and have our backs why not heavily heavily heavily, like sex workers have done so much for us to be able to live our lives and the way that we are instead of focusing on trying to reach this unattainable standard because again guys i really want to emphasize femininity is a model created against black women and instead of trying to chase that why not be more aware of uh, the, the realities of sex workers and treat them as human beings. And part of doing that is to check your internalized whorephobia. And we all have it. We we all have it. And it's it's to work on that. No, no, vraiment. Puis, you know, tu vois quand tu parlais de, les, de black women that were anti-sex work, um, dans le livre que j'ai, que j'ai lu, Playing the Whore, she, was, she talked about how souvent les gens qui sont anti sex work won't be like ils vont pas plus essayer de trouver like if la fin c'est she was saying if we want to abolish sex work let's say we want to abolish sex work focus on finding genre un, like a new job for every yeah. person that is in the industry and then maybe we're going to talk about abolition parce qu'elle a pris dans le fond l'exemple d'une femme that used to be a sex worker but is now a teacher and but she wrote like a blog about Um, sex work parce que il voulait fermer genre like a section in Craigslist where like sex worker would find jobs il voulait le fermer puis elle she was saying basically comme oh we should not do that parce que I, when I was a sex worker that really helped me find mm. some job mm. et tout but les là les gens su que comme she was a teacher comme un journaliste a pris sa photo put it in the journal like oh this teacher la 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 used to be like a sex worker and she lost her job puis dans le fond, la, l'autrice disait « Why the anti-sex work people were not show ?» Like, they didn't show up for her. Parce que by, si, si on, on check, genre, les, les affaires, she did what she had to do to get out of the industry. Like, she was a teacher qui est comme considérée as a respectable job. So when she lo- loses her job because of her past, pourquoi comme les gens qui sont anti-sex work are not there, like, nowhere to be found to yeah, help to her. to help her out, right? C'est genre, c'est comme, like, what, like c'est, c'est quoi le but? Yeah. <laughs> genre, c'est comme, like, why, c'est, c'est, c'est quoi, what is the angle? Yeah. 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 Puis, pour de vrai, là, guys, like, the, the reason why, like, we're able to, like, it's more acceptable now for us to wear certain types of clothing. Like, even, like, I'm seeing these styles of dresses. Comme t'avais dit, la robe trouée. Or, like, the sheer dresses. Like, it, like I swear to you, a few years ago, it was not a common thing to, like, go out to dinner in a, in a sheer mini dress. Like, sheer with, like, you know, we no, s- panties no. and all of that. And all of, like, this, this aesthetic, this style has been like sex workers paved the way sex workers have put their lives on the line and have done all of this and we're able to profit off of that and dibble our our toes into whore culture while being whorephobic it's just who are we how is that benefiting us in any way shape or form it so does it does not we mm-hmm. have to we have to we have to hold ourselves accountable and we have to know that a lot of the narratives that we're pushing forward are white supremacist narratives come come back i would see the whole like oh baby mama thing and what's so funny is that 
the baby mama thing is really just going to affect black women because I'm sorry, the Kardashians are all... They're all baby mamas. They're all baby mamas. You, Kylie, bro. No, <laughs> they're all baby they mamas. Were? They're all baby mamas. Everybody, every single person that had a kid is a baby... Even Kim, I like you North before. She was pregnant before uh, she got married. It's like, they're all baby mamas. It's the chin. Like, we're not saying it's a bad thing. Like, go for it. It's just... Understand what narrative you're pushing when you're saying these things. Ouais. Non, c'est, c'est ça. Puis, à qui, justement, who are you pushing this to? Parce que, comme on a dit, les Kardashians, moi, j'ai, on dirait que je n'ai jamais, jamais entendu personne les appeler baby mama number but they're, two. But they're all baby mamas. Oui. <laughs> but yeah. they're all baby mamas. Puis, Chloé, avec son, like, like son, oh, what's, c'est quoi son nom? En tout cas, False. her man. <laughs> False. <laughs> ça dit False. <laughs> Oh, Herman had a baby mama come before her. Yeah. And then, you, puis, personne n'est genre, oh, number two. Même si les gens shame Chloé à gauche, à droite. It's not going to be, oh, oh, c'est fucking vrai. Puis genre, Ciara, elle s'est remariée, et c'est si ça, and we, you, she's still like future's baby mama. Yeah. Like, it's still like, yeah. that's your title. And she that been married. Ouais. Yo, been. Ça fait un bon six ans. Yeah. Hein. Like, what, like, what, nar- like, understand the narratives that you're pushing, and I feel like, Come that Z, it's it's no it's not it's no longer fair to be like, well, I'm just trying to survive this. Like, uh, aren't we all, sis? Aren't we all? <laughs> like, I'm trying to survive too. You're next. <laughs> like, like I guess at this point it's like, okay, I get it, I get it, but next. but I don't know. Puis pour revenir au how genre I guess how sex workers feel about their work is c'est propre à eux and it changes every day. From sex worker to sex worker, c'est vrai, je pense que c'est vraiment ce que tu as dit. We have to see it as like our job. Yo, des fois tu veux quit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> des fois tu veux quit. Des fois tu es fatigué. Des yeah. fois tu n'es yeah, pas down. Puis c'est pas. Puis si chaque jour je te venais, puis je suis comme, ben là, quit. Puis non, non, non. Puis genre, abolish all les like, call centers because you're not. Puis, c'est, c'est comme it's But not. Exactly. C'est, 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 it's, it's, And I get it that. You know, it's it's a messy process. Even us, like it's messy sometimes. Like the way that we talk about certain topics, like like that that episode it where is. we it, it it was so messy. Like thank thank you for the people that like hit us up and was like, what the fuck? Because it was a little bit messy the way that we approached it, and that just goes to show that we lack a lot of knowledge and information on that as well. So it's like instead of focusing on trying to move up the 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 ladder, where you won't really be able to. And if you think that you've moved up the ladder, your position is very temporary and it takes nothing to push you all the way back the down. Way it takes nothing. It takes nothing. It takes nothing. It takes, it takes nothing. nothing. I feel like we, we've seen it time, time and time again. again. <laughs> time and time again. And it's even in the, if we go back to the video vixen thing, a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the, from the women that were interviewed, a lot of the models had said that they were treated a lot of them were treated worse by like women crew members like women uh casting directors women stylists whatever and then when the women uh, crew members were interviewed they were uh, some of them were like yeah and it's because we really have no choice but to emulate like this masculine Masculinity. energy because that's literally all that's around us they're having these private meetings we're not invited like we have to do the most to be able to get a seat at their table and they and they see that they see that the treatment and that's why they go, they go full force and it's like But instead of helping out your good sis, you will do anything to sit at the table. And then they sit at the table and then they're getting sexually harassed. They're getting sexually assaulted by these rappers that they're tr- trying so hard to impress while simultaneously uh, dogging on on um, on the women models. And, it's, and, and we see that constantly. They talked about like the casting directors, women casting directors, women crew members. They talked about how the main girls, like the the more beautiful girls, would be invited to lunch during breaks on the set, and then the 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 extras, the girls that were paid a little less, were given like craft dinner. Come, your do your own makeup, do your own hair. When the 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 main and it's like instead of as a crew member being like, yeah, like, let me go sit with the niggas. Why don't you outsource and find makeup artists that's going to bless the girls? Why don't you? Because you're not benefiting from this. No. And they've said it. I'm being harassed as well. I'm not being invited to these label meetings, although I'm doing everything. I'm performing misogyny to the hardest per, like level, and you're as still not profiting can. from it. And this mm-hmm. is literally the ep- epitome of being a woman and trying so hard to sit at the niggas' table. It doesn't work. Instead of shitting on these women, calling them whores, look at Melissa Ford. 13 years later, Shorty is traumatized because she was refer- <laughs> 
reference and one rap song. Because <laughs> 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 like, like, oh, I no, did my so. research. I did my research and I was like, Melissa Ford rap lyrics. I was like, who else would talk about Shorty? Pour de vrai, that was the only song I could find. So it's like, um, bro, je sais pas là. Yeah, I th- aussi, je pense que, I think c'est encore plus important pour nous de just have this solidarity parce que white women, the way mm. they... Tu vois ce que nous, we, can, we cannot get, genre, you never will be virtuous enough. Les femmes blanches sont virtuous by default. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, in the book I was reading, il parlait de, like, war, like the whore stigma. So, peu importe ce que tu fais that is not virtuous, you're a whore. So, you just, and the only precondition to be a whore is to be a woman. Puis, but when... Des, quand il a commencé à avoir les trucs de, you know, slot walk et tout, puis les gens reprenaient le mot. The white women were really, like, they were amazed, like, as, like, at how, like, they could, like, reclaim that word and stuff. But the black woman, like, dans le livre, c'est écrit, but the black woman were like, bitch, we... <laughs> <laughs> Whoreware. <laughs> what? <laughs> Slotware. <laughs> We've been whores, like... Yeah. Um, puis dans le sens que, genre, we will never afford this boundaries of, like, on, we're only just... Virtuous. Mm. It was never like that for black women. Mm. So they were like, yeah, I'm a slut. I'm, well, I'm, I've been. I've been. Yeah. Can you, like, they called me a bitch. Like, même, even if it's not personal, it's like, even when you consume like, social media, it's always like, black bitches, black bitches. Like, you're always in that. Bro, I swear to God, so I swear to God, when Amber Rose started the slut walk, I was like, girl, that's not for me. <laughs> I remember being like, yeah, I'm not calling myself a slut. And it's really from that. It's like we hear it all oh, the time, oh, all the time. It's literally oh. your identity as a black woman, especially if you move any way in another direction of what the idea of femininity is. So I get that. Yeah, I get that. So at the end, we... So we hold we hold each other accountable as black women. I think it's important also as black women to understand that another black woman holding you accountable is not an attack. Yo, for the vrai, it's not. It's not. It's, it's love. Not. It's, it's love. Always love it's for the vrai. It's love. It's not. It's c'est, love. C'est pas, some, c'est pas malicieux. If I if I point out something, puis genre like this, don't come. Il faut pas le prendre on some. Genre, you can be, ça, ça peut venir te chercher, that's not it. Mais c'est, il faut pas être en, c'est, c'est vraiment parce que je t'aime. Yeah. Parce que if I didn't, genre, pour de vrai, je t'aurais pas pris le temps. Yeah. Et c'est, c'est vraiment de ce, de ce point de vue-là. Yeah, and I think we need to Always. stop waiting for, like, niggas to do it for us. Like, okay, like, treat us well, respect us, and then everything is gonna... Yeah, c'est une part de temps, guys. Je sais pas si vous avez... Mais c'est ça, puis I've been, like I've been, I've dit... been, forget about that at this ouais, point. It's il faut like, oublier. Il faut, faut, faut oublier. Oui, <laughs> pour vrai, d'ailleurs, il faut oublier. And that's one thing that I agree about what we talked about in our episode on deconstruction is like, decenter men. Like, decenter men, completely decenter men from your fight, and now look at how you can help your community. And like, honestly, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm in, I'm in community with men and that's fine. I'm not. <laughs> like, non, mais c'est chill. C'est chill. <laughs> non, mais pour de vrai, c'est chill. I'm Just not. Just <laughs> oublie. And genre, no. Quand je vous dis, ta vie est mieux when you just forget. Yeah. You don't have to be bitter about it. No, you don't have, like. Que, en tout cas, I feel like some women are overperforming. Dans this like misa- misandry thing? That I hate men. Yeah, c'est comme, comme sis. You, you think, you, 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 you just talk about bravo. Like, like you just, dans le sens que comme, tu peux être vraiment uh, I hate men, mais genre, il y a des gens que je pense qu'ils vont... They overperform... I don't know what this, this is. Okay. Je, j'aimerais analyser ce phénomène. Okay. Like, they overperform the I hate men. Yeah. And après, la journée d'après, c'est juste que... But I, can get, I cannot get enough. Genre, c'est très... Um, yeah. Um, like a weird... <sighs> tu sais qu'on disait... OK. Oh, quête. Est-ce que tu sais qu'on on disait que... I think there was a quote that men don't really go after the women that they are seen as... Like, what we call the pick-me, genre, the ouais. easy ones. Parce ouais, que we talked about ouais, this. Ouais, ouais. They, they see, ils voient que, genre, de, le but, c'est de put someone in cage. So, the one who seems like the more free, that's the one that, that they go after. That will be caged. Puis j'ai l'impression que some women picked on that and, like, overcompensate the, like, oh, no, no, parce que pour de vrai, des fois, I forget about niggas. 
So I'm going to be je vais être frustré une seconde je suis oh, hey, niggas. But And then you move on. You move on, bro. Il y a un show sur Netflix, ouais. l'île de l'amour va passer. L'île de l'amour va passer. Charlotte va arriver. Donc c'est comme you know move on, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a il y a cette overperformance of like Yeah, of yeah. like I hate niggas. Like I do, but like You know, you don't have to talk about it that much. Where moi, well, as soon as I decided to decenter men, I feel like my life was much better. Like it's like I'm such chill. Y'a moins de pression. C'est ça, c'est ça. So honestly, um, black women are able to perform harm on other black women through different ways, through us um, per, uh, perpetuating the, these um, horophobic ideals, us wanting so badly to chase this idea of femininity. But that guy, guys, if I see another video of When you ditch the long nails and 25 millimeter lashes and weaves and you start <laughs> embracing your come and you start <laughs> and you start drinking It's matcha really and you have short French nails. It's like, uh. <laughs> and then now I'm like my, the best version of me. Like, because you wear yoga pants. Come, <laughs> go I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. It's just let's just let's just be aware of the things that we're saying. Il faut être aware. Des fois, il faut se fatiguer. Yeah. Parce que I cannot believe que t'as t'as écrit ce paragraphe là puis t'es pas exhausted. Like, j'ai lu ça. Or embarrassed. I'm out of breath. Like, c'est correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can also you can just change aesthetic. Puis y a aucune raison là. Je pense que c'est pas pourquoi. I'm the best version of you. You're, you're just one version. Where? The it's, classy it's, girl vibe, it too. It's good. It just the idea of classy in itself. It's such a <laughs> white supremacist. Mais pour de vrai, ok, Loki. Les gens sont comme when when you say the gens, ils sont comme on me traite de white woman. Puis des fois je suis comme ben pour de vrai ouais. Parce ouais. que ça vient de où? Ouais. To be honest, je suis comme pour de vrai ouais. ouais. Genre t'as pris ça de où? Ouais. Comme, to be honest, ouais. 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 No, no cap. Like no whenever cap, these, they, they, these black girls are like, oh yeah, they call me Oreo. I'm like. Where go? Where go? Well, well, you, <laughs> you wouldn't make it a day. <laughs> <laughs> Chilling with my <laughs> friends. Have you the ooh? Have you the ooh, bro? I don't know. Come, for real, what? What? Not as dragging women. <laughs> No, but for the right guys, let's just do better. For the right, be honestly, the, we can look back on this episode and be like, "Oh, na fari si, na fari si," and that's the beauty of just learning, evolving, and growing. Because I'm really cool with saying shit and being wrong. Because I'm chill. Be, I think, I, I think we have to be more open to criticism. Be, au début, I remember at first I was so like criticism and me did not work. No, I pleurais, bro. For vrai, là, au début. Yo, 2020, back you. I could not. We write a paragraph. Allô! Ah, non, mais regarde, les DMs were a scary place. Any time, someone was like, hey guys, I love the episode, however, moi je come back, ouvre le message, parce que moi je vais pass out. But now, it's like, oh yeah, like we fucked up. Ouais, okay. Ouais, ouais. My bad. My bad. Puis we'll do better, mieux. comme we'll do better. Genre, Puis, pour de vrai, most people just take it well. Genre, Ils oh, prennent super bien. En plus, ils sont super genre, oh merci de m'avoir écouté. So I think. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Don't trip. Yeah, that's gonna be alright. I think we're I think we're ready to conclude, right? C'est legit la conclusion. Yeah, we, we already we concluded. Conclu- now we go. On a conclu six fois. Je sais que Enzo est fatigué. Are you tired? <laughs> you good? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I'm. T- oh, guys, vote for Ruby Il de l'amour. Oui, s'il vous plaît. Some real shit. Like yeah. our good sis. We, we she gotta make She's, it to the end. She do her, her best. Yeah. So on that note, I'm TT, and I'm back, and we're what the kids call woke or whatever. Or whatever. <sighs>